okay students now we are into next class seams strength we have studied very deeply and now we will be studying seams in woven fabrics and seams in knitted fabrics now <coughs> the following points regarding seams in woven fabric are worthy to note black wood and chamberlain 1970 so i will study this from these two people and uh, it's very less only and then after that we will do some stream strength testing and then let's see so this is seams in woven fabrics when garment seams are subjected to increased transverse stress a point is reached when the threads of the fabric which lie parallel to the seam in the seam alliance are displaced bodily then the seam opens slightly which presents an unacceptable appearance such a seam has failed commercially even though no rupture has occurred <coughs> in any examination of seams attention has to be directed to two different values of stress at which the seam opens to an unacceptable extent and that at which it finally ruptures in any examination of seams attention has to be directed to two different values of stress at which the seam opens to an unaccept to an unacceptable extent and that at which it finally ruptures <laughs> the opening load is mainly dependent on a the stitch rate b the weave structure of the fabric c the width of the seam allowance for a given width of fabric allowance the seam opening and breaking loads were both found to increase rapidly with stitch rate the effect being most marked with plain weave structures thus a narrow seam allowance can to some extent be offset by increasing the stitch rate it is minimum sewn knot or loop strength of the sewing thread that governs seam strength it is minimum sewn knot or loop strength of the sewing thread that governs the seam strength and not the main tensile strength measured directly from the cop or bobbin it is minimum loop strength of the sewing thread that governs the seam strength why i don't know why he used the term minimum sewn knot minimum i don't know why he used the word minimum so when stress is applied to a seam at right angles to its length when the when stress is applied to a seam when stress is applied to a seam at right angles to its length the load is carried by the intersecting loops of the sewing threads the load is carried by the intersecting loops of the sewing thread <coughs> and when the latter rupture 
द ब्रेक अकर्स एट द ओपनिंग ऑफ द लूप द स्ट्रेंथ पैरामीटर दट अप्लाइज ईज देर फोर द लूप स्ट्रेंथ रादर दैन द स्ट्रेट एंड सेल स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द स्विंग थ्रेड so this is very good so uh, explanation of seam strength in woven fabrics i will do one thing dear students i will read it two times now i have read seam strength in woven fabrics i have divided into two topics one is introduction and the second one is actual testing so introduction i have read once i will read one more time these are all experiments so because this this experiments you can also do how much is getting into your head by reading once are you concentrating completely i have concentrated completely i learned uh, 99% of it but i want to read one more time i don't know why but i want to read one more time and after that i will explain this and after that i will read seam strength testing two times and then i will explain it and then i will show video so that is our agenda <coughs> so i will read one more time blackwood and chamberlain 1970 when Ga- in 1970 they said this when garment seams are subjected to increased transfer stress that is english is wrong to increased there should be d when garment seams are subjected to increased transfer stress a point is reached when the threads of the fabric which lie parallel to the seam in the seam alliance are displaced bodily then the seam opens slightly which presents an unacceptable appearance such a seam has failed commercially even though no rupture has occurred in any examination of seams attention has to be directed to two different values of stress at which the seam opens to an unacceptable extent and that at which it finally ruptures so it the point at which the seam opens and the point at which ruptures that means damages the opening load is mainly dependent on the stitch rate opening load means opening force it is mainly dependent on the stitch rate the weave structure of the fabric the width of the seam alliance for a given width of fabric alliance again he is wrong he says fabric alliance so these are all mistakes lot of mistakes are there in textile industry for a given width of fabric alliance it should be seam alliance not fabric alliance that's what i think let us read and find out for a given width of fabric bracket seam alliance 
the seam opening and breaking loads were both found to increase rapidly with stitch rate the effect being most marked with plain weave structures thus a narrow seam allowance can to some extent be offset by increasing you see here is a seam allowance dear students you have to learn english very well i am in a position to find out the defects in books also i told you it is not fabric allowance so here he is saying allowance again seam allowance so you see thus a narrow seam allowance can to some extent be offset by increasing the stitch rate it is minimum loop strength of the sewing thread that governs seam strength and not the mean tensile strength measured directly from the cop or bobbin when stress is applied to a seam at right angles to its length the load is carried by <coughs> my mind is little wavered for a second i will read one more time when stress is applied to a seam at right angles to its length the load is carried by the intersecting loops of the sewing threads and when the latter rupture the break occurs at the opening of the loop the strength parameter that applies is therefore the loop strength rather than the straight tensile strength of the sewing thread so dear students i have studied now seams in woven fabrics so here he says he uses seam allowance fabric allowance he used the word but that is wrong so when the seams are subjected there is a seam suppose there is a seam it is subjected to a stress then where is the what happens the la, the weave structure that line that goes parallel to the seam line if it is little bit damaged then that means it is unacceptable though it does not fail the seam so that's what he said though it does not result in breakage of the seam but it is a it is not an acceptable thing for the customer so that means seam has failed so that's what first paragraph is next one is there are two points when the seam opens when will it open and when will it actually break so there are two points so the opening load is mainly dependent on stitch rate stitch rate is you know stitch rate means number of stitches per centimeter and the speed at which actually stitch rate means the speed at which stitch is done stitching is done so it should not be stitch rate it should be stitches per centimeter and next one is weave structure of the fabric the seam also depends on weave structure of the fabric what what does it mean what is seam structure <coughs> 
view structure so plane view twill view setting view so all these things and the next one is seam allowance so seam allowance is also one more important factor so for a given width of seam allowance the opening load and breaking load both found to increase rapidly with stitch rate so with the stitch rate both will be increasing so there is one more important point so please this is the most important point very fine point what is the tensile strength of the sewing thread suppose 10 grams per tex is the tensile strength of the sewing thread going to affect the seam strength yes of course but it is mainly the loop strength that defines the seam strength of the fabric or seam strength of the fabric so uh, so seam do you understand loop strength is different so you have seen chain stitch formation loop formation in the last class and there is a lock stitch formation in that also there is a loop formation looper you have seen looper a device known as looper so looper forms loops obviously so loop strength of a sewing thread or one or more sewing sewing threads in a seam is more important than the sewing thread than the tensile strength of the sewing thread so this is what it is so so i have read thoroughly this is called 100% concentration getting into the subject you have to feel the loops you have to see the loops you have to understand the terms the terms should revolve in your mind so now so that is about introduction now seam strength in woven fabric now the testing part so i will show you the so this is the testing part so i will show you the videos also now i will read the testing part it is very simple the seam strength in woven fabric can be tested by cutting a specimen 15 into 10 cm in such a way that the seam is in the middle and parallel to the width of the specimen. Which is placed between two sets of jaws 7.6 cm apart so that the seam is approximately at the center in the center between two jaws these jaws are then pulled away from each other creating a tensile force on the testing test specimen comma ultimately results a break in either the seam or the fabric whichever is weaker the force and at this point is is noted which is the seam strength expressed in grams 
it is customary to take at least 3 to 5 specimens to test and the final result is expressed as an average of the test results of these specimens in terms of grams the complete procedural details of this test can be found in ASTM D 1683 standard test method for failure in sewn seams of woven fabrics annual book of ASTM standards volume 07.01 figure 5.7 shows seam strength testing so this is about seam strength testing i will read one more time for your sake the seam strength in woven fabric can be tested by cutting a specimen 15 into 10 cm in such a way that the seam is in the middle and parallel to the width of the specimen which is placed between two sets of jaws 7.6 cm apart so that the seam is approximately in the center between two jaws these jaws are then pulled away from each other creating a tensile force on the test specimen ultimately results a break in either the seam or the fabric whichever is weaker the force and at this point is noted which is the seam strength expressed in grams it is customary to take at least 3 to 5 specimens to test and the final test result is expressed as an average of the test results of these specimens standard test procedure is ASTM D1683 so seam strength testing so seam strength testing is done with the help of samples taken 15 into 10 cm and in that cm there should be seam seam should be there otherwise how can you test seam so in the 15 into 10 cm sample seam should be in the middle and it should be parallel to the width of the specimen and seam should be parallel to the width of the specimen and it is placed in between the two jaws and the two jaws are 7.6 cm apart and then the these jaws are pulled away from each other and then similar to tensile testing but here the seam is present so with this pulling away of the jaws from each other one of the two either the fabric breaks or the seam breaks so and the force at which the seam breaks or fabric ruptures is expressed in grams and it is customary to take at least 3 to 5 specimens that means you have to take 5 samples 5 specimens and the average of the 5 specimens is taken and that is the seam strength of the fabric and now let's go to our favorite youtube
So this class is very nice. I am getting more and more interest. So this is what this is how it should be. So I will show you as many videos as possible because we have time. Welcome to the sustainable, waterless, energy efficient textile dyeing revolution. Man, shirt is cut. So why I am showing more videos? Because because we can learn more. Different people have different views. You see, seam is broken. Have you seen D1683? This is the same thing I told that is present in the book. D1683. So, this is ASTM standard. And now we will see. <laughs> रैपिडो है लो प्राइस कंफर्टेबल और क्विक टाइम से पहुंचो एकदम स्पेशल 
keep the template specimen size is here in our book the specimen size is given different here it is 315 to 100 mm that means 35 centimeters into 10 centimeters mark the template and cut the specimen so you can write these points as notes also and then that will be written in exams and if you write in the exams you will get marks so mark the template and cut the specimen so this is called as a template the steel thing is called as a template Check the GSM because seam test perform according to GSM. So we have to check the grams per square meter of the fabric. Thread use is 40 text polyester coarse pun yarn. One side fold and stitch 13 mm edge of the specimen. Seam allowance 13 millimeters. Gauge length 3 inches. So the distance between the two jaws. Mount the specimen. So specimen is mounted. So this is called as slippage, yarn slippage. We are going to get the topic soon after today's next class. So, so that is the seam strength is observed there. So So dear students, we have completed seam strength in woven fabrics. So what we have studied, so what we have studied in seam strength of woven fabric can some of you tell please write down assignments without listening again to the class if you have listened once then you listen once and write down what are the important points something like that and uh, Seam strength is there is an opening strength and breaking strength when the seam is opened at which force the seam is opened and after opening of the seam when will the seam break that is breaking force so opening force and breaking force both of them are important but the opening force load is dependent on stitch rate 
weave structure and seam alliance width of the seam alliance in the video we have seen the seam alliance is 13 centimeters the seam alliance is 13 centimeters 13 millimeters and for a given width of seam alliance the seam opening and breaking loads were both they both increase with increasing stitch rate so and the next important point is loop strength and tensile strength so you might have observed in the seam strength testing machine how the seam strength is tested the fabric is cut such a way that the seam is in the middle and the upper jaw and lower jaw are present and the seam is exactly in the middle between the lower jaw and upper jaw and upper jaw and lower jaw are separated by a distance of 3 inches that is 7.6 centimeters generally so and both of them were drawn away from each other by the computer and by the force and by switching on the computer and by the force and then the seam breaks at certain point and that certain <coughs> point is measured and force is measured and that is the seam strength of the fabric it is very nicely and clearly given and the next one is loop strength and tensile strength so we have seen that the seam strength is higher in some fabric seam strength is in is higher in fabrics with chain stitch loops and flat felled seam lap felled seam or and chain stitch seam chain stitch loops so these are the two important factors that increase the seam strength of the fabric and loop strength is the more important than tensile strength till now i have studied from 18 class 23 classes or 24 classes nobody talked about loop strength the author did not mention about loop strength anywhere till now so seam strength depends on loop strength the whole class today's class is this one line seam strength not necessarily mean tensile strength of the sewing thread but it is the loop strength of the sewing threads and that gives rise to seam strength of the fabric and it has phenomenal effect on seam strength so and i have shown you the videos both i have shown you one or two videos i don't remember both are one or both of them or three of them are astm d 1683 standard test method for a failure in few seams of woven fabrics.
ASTM D1683. Why I am mentioning again and again in the classes is the number that is written in the textbook is available on the YouTube. That means there is a proof that they are correct. Scientifically and psychologically you will feel the correlation between the YouTube and textbook and teacher and lecturer and YouTube uploaders they are also teachers or they are marketers or they are just YouTubers or they are anybody so please understand that I am trying to give a connection and correlation with all these things that's why I am saying again and again we have seen ASTM D1683 standard test methods today so that ends now and we will see about seams in knitted fabrics in the next class.